Now, I've always wanted to own a supercomputer. Today, you can. You can buy something like a high-end AMD G uh, or NVIDIA GPU to put into your system, and that gives you the same computational power as a supercomputer less than 20 years ago. However, if you want to actually own a full one, well, here's an auction just for you. What's your minimum specification? A lot of the content on this channel wouldn't be possible without you, the supporters. Many thanks to all who support. And if you're interested in supporting, then we have Patreon, we have a merch store, I have a Substack newsletter, or simply just like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. There is what used to be the number 24 in the world supercomputer is up for sale on GSA auctions. Now, there are some caveats with this uh, system. It doesn't work. Well, it does work, but there are some issues. As described in the auction listing, the quick disconnects for the liquid cooling have got a bit leaky. So if you're prepared to wade through what could be potential water damage in a system, you today can go and bid on a massive supercomputer. 8,000 Xeon CPUs, E5 2697v4, so we're talking sort of Broadwell era CPUs, uh, in multiple racks weighing up to 15,000 pounds in weight. So that's what, seven, six, 6,000 kilos. Um, when I first heard of this story, the bidding was at 38,000. It has since risen over the past 24 hours to 50 to 100,000 with minimum increments of $85. It doesn't say what the auction started at, but I've got a system here and uh, let's go through it. So it's a Cheyenne, it's a supercomputer based in uh, Cheyenne in the US. Uh, time remaining as I'm filming this is two days of the auction and the current bid is $100,085 uh, with 18 bidders. Um, it is an old SGI system. This is in the sort of HPE days um, with what they say 14 E cells weighing 1500 pounds each and an E cell um, is multiple uh, racks. There's 28 E racks, all liquid cooled with 4,000 dual socket nodes. Uh, so they're configured as quad node blades. And the CPU, as I said, Intel's uh, Xeon E5 2697v4. Now, this is an almost a 10 year old CPU. Um, modern day Bogamo uh, could easily wipe the floor with this thing, um, but it's available. It's an, it's an 18 core. It was one of the best Intel had at the time. 2.3 gigahertz base frequency, 145 watt TDP. The whole system has nearly 150,000 cores and a DDR4 2400 memory, 64 gigs per node, that's 32 gigs per CPU. Now these were quad channel CPUs, uh, DDR4, so those are probably eight gigabyte sticks. We'll get into some of the pricing of what, what the breakdown of this could be. Um, a little bit later, but it does have um, EDR InfiniBand and 224 uh, InfiniBand switches. Um, they are careful to point out that fiber optic and CAT56 cabling is not included. Um, though, however, internal uh, DAC cables within each cell will be meticulously labeled, um, removed and packaged uh, for future installation. So that means you'll get every all the cables from inside a cell, but to connect cells together, you need to do that yourself. They'll even supply uh, coolant fluid, 10 gallons uh, per cell. So 14 cells, 140 gallons. Um, the, the auction, um, if you're thinking of bidding for this, does not include shipping. And because it's a um, US government-based supercomputer, uh, you have to use one of their approved shippers uh, and ship this, it's going to probably cost just as much in shipping, I'll be honest. It does list uh, condition. Now, if you're used to eBay, you have new, used, or parts. Uh, in this case, it's condition repairable. Uh, water damage is, uh, is not easy, and the fact that you have to go buy this thing, you don't have to ship it, find somewhere to store it, and then go and fix it for 150,000 Broadwell-style cores, or, you know, a few of these might just do what you actually need to need it to do. So you're probably thinking 100,000 is actually really cheap for a supercomputer. We've got 8,000 CPUs here, uh, 4,000 blades, and uh, lots and lots of memory, 313,344 gigabytes of memory. 
we did some mathematics, and it turns out these CPUs, the Xeon E5 2697V4s, if you go on eBay today and buy one, it's about 50 bucks. So if you wanted to go sell 8,000 of them at 50 bucks a pop, that's 400 grand. However, I fully expect that if you put uh, 8,000 CPUs onto the market, the price won't be 50 bucks each, uh, maybe 10 at best. So that's $80,000, okay. Let's move on to the memory. Now, we said uh, 313 uh, terabytes of memory, DDR4, in eight gigabyte modules. You go look at how much an eight gigabyte module is today, about 10 to 15 bucks, and there's 40,000 of these in the system. So you're looking at about 400 grand. Again, if you put all of that memory in the market at once, chances are you're not gonna find people who are gonna buy individual sticks. So you're gonna wanna sell, sell it wholesale, so you'll probably get you know, a quarter of that at best. So just those two parts is 200 grand. However, you still have to buy the system and ship it and then organize it and then check to make sure everything works if you want to go down that route. Now, one of the interesting features, I think, of modern computing is almost how easy it is to get a top supercomputer these days into the top 500 list. If you're not aware, twice a year there's a, a f top 500 list where supercomputers around the world um, essentially submit their benchmark results in a benchmark called LINPAC, and they're listed in terms of uh, peak performance, theoretical maximum performance, uh, and the power consumption. It's a self-selective list, so only systems that actually have data submitted um, actually get put on the list. So it's typically academic institutions and government institutions. We don't see too many um, commercial installations on that list. Also, in recent years, China hasn't submitted anything. So take of that what you will. In order to get on the top 500 list today, if you went out and bought NVIDIA H100 GPUs, you would need about 150 of them, which is about a rack. That's not a lot which means if you want a supercomputer at home, you just go out and buy one. Um, if you've got a spare you know, 40 to 50 grand, uh, given what the gray market prices are now for NVIDIA GPUs, uh, given machine learning, given AI, you're still looking about 40K a pop. Uh, so for two or three of those, you can buy a supercomputer from the US government. Um, it doesn't say anything about storage. There are some additional servers on top of this to help with management. These are a bit more powerful, a bit more uh, memory in them, a bit more power hungry. There might actually be some value in those. But overall, it's a supercomputer. If you want to spend that spare 100K to buy it, spare 100K to ship it, perhaps you should put your bid on today. Now, on the auction listing, they actually do have a few photos of the supercomputer, and it actually looks pretty well, you know, it, as in a proper installation with proper fascias and uh, all the lots of cables are bundled again. They said, you know, some cables may not be, in, uh, probably not included, but within a cell, they're going to be. Um, with the cooling uh, system, the CDU, the, the cooling distribution unit, they have said that this will also be supplied, but it will be supplied in bits. So not only do you have to go build that and see what out of it works, um, you have to find out which quick disconnects are being leaky. Um, elsewhere in the press, they have described this as the leaky supercomputer for sale. Um, I'm Over the years, I've had so many issues with liquid cooling. Um, I'm much more of a fan of air cooling these days. However, with high-powered some supercomputers, we've seen uh, NVIDIA's new NVL72 system. That's 120 kilowatts in a single rack. That'll probably be sold later this year. Um, early into next, that has to go liquid cooling because we're pushing the limits on what air cooling can do. Air cooling is probably good to about 400 watts per, per chip, maybe 450, 500, but when you start hitting 600, 700 or over a kilowatt, as some of the high-end systems are, then you absolutely need liquid cooling. And in a system like this, where density is also a factor, you know, you've got racks and racks and racks, and you've only got a limited physical space to put it in, liquid cooling helps with that efficiency. Um, it also helps you know, if you need to push the power a little bit more, get a little bit more performance out. My main specification here is what I want to see what happened to this, what happened to one of the Ohio supercomputers. Now, a few years ago at Supercomputing, this is the annual HPC conference uh, that I go to every year. An Ohio supercomputing center decommissioned one of their smaller systems 
And instead of just uh, you know selling it off or getting it all recycled, they took the CPUs out, they took the memory out, and they made them into handy giveaways uh, at the event. So on some of them there are a magnet, on uh, some of them you could pin them uh, onto your onto your clothes, and uh, yeah, they sit in my office, um, and that's kind of fun. Somebody's trying to make a, a small buck here rather than actually just you know trashing the whole thing. Um, but yeah, one of the ways that actually got me to think, oh, Ohio has a supercomputer center. It's just, let's give some stuff like that away. So yeah, that's my main specification. Let's put some magnets on these CPUs and hand them out.